yeah, so like I said, it's been about an hour. I had, I don't know why I'm saying it like that. Apologies. It's been about an hour. It's been an hour, okay? It's 1824. 1824, 624. Sorry. <clears throat> and we're back. What have I done in the last hour? No more revision. No, I didn't. Um, I had yogurt and cereal. One second, why does this make it a bad noise? So where was I? I'm going to be quick because it's getting dark. It's going to be dark by like 8.30. Anyway, so I had yogurt and cereal is what I had for my snack. Lunch, I don't know. Um, my mum got the Onken. Onken? I think that's the yogurt. I don't actually remember the brand. Onken yogurt. Plain natural yogurt. I don't know. It tasted funny. I didn't like it at all. We're gonna go back to my the one I usually use or eat. I don't know why we're talking about yogurt. Who cares? Did my little all the ones I got wrong? Here they are. From here, put these on here. Um, I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't. I can't say I remember it, but I finished that. And right here, you can see I did that eight minutes ago. Eight minutes ago. And now, what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna do another theory test. Just because we're stay three and I keep saying and but yeah it's stay three and I need to get it done so we're gonna go on to the next mock theory test and we're just gonna see how I do hopefully I do better than the last one so the first time I think I got 13 wrong today I got 11 wrong let's see if I do any better now you can use the right hand lane of a three lane dual carriageway for Overtaking and turning. Turning right only. Driving over 50 miles an hour. Overtaking? <sighs> the national speed limit for motor cars is different on different roads. What is the speed limit on a motorway? I don't even remember anymore. Is it 60 miles per hour or 70? Next question. It is illegal to overload a vehicle. Who is legally responsible for this? The person who loaded the items belong. The person who loaded the vehicle. The person to whom the I loaded items belong. The registered keeper of the vehicle. The driver of the vehicle. You are approaching a right hand bend. You should keep to the left because it will give you the best view of the road. It's a polite thing to do, it will give you the best view of the road. Um, I don't know what it means by camber but okay. You should keep to the left so that you can have the best possible view of the road. You have two 12 year old children and one of their parents in your car. The children are in the rear seat. Who is Whose responsibility is it to make sure that the children are wearing seatbelts? Um, two 12 year old children. Um, yours? I don't know, it doesn't say at a time permitted, once rush hour is over, never. Oh, so that traffic on a clearway can flow without being obstructed, you are never allowed to stop on a clearway. Um, some road signs give orders that must be obeyed. Usually such orders are on... Circle? Okay, so it's not... <laughs> it's not... Oh yeah, it is. Red circle. But I was thinking blue circle. So what's blue circle then? A red... Red circle is... Blue rectangle is instructions. Green rectangle is... <clears throat> found on primary roads. Red triangle is <sighs> There's no hints allowed or any. What is red triangle? Red triangle is like give way uh a school warnings. Warnings. Red okay, let's go red circle. Okay. Most regulatory signs are red circles. The colour and the shape indicate what these signs must be obeyed. I don't know if I read that correctly. 
Why are LRT systems, trams or metros considered environmentally friendly? They are fixed in route, the route they follow, they are faster, they operate completely separately from traffic, they use electrical power and do not produce emissions. Light rapid transit systems. People are online. Um, you have had to use the hard shoulder on the motorway, but now you need to rejoin the carriageway. You should wait for a gap in traffic, pull onto the carriageway and build up your speed. Pull up your speed on the hard shoulder before joining the, the carriageway. Indicate your intention, then wait for another driver to flash his or her lights at you. Pull onto the carriageway with hazard lights on so that other traffic will be more aware of you. Isn't it? I think it's build up your speed. Build up your speed on the hard shoulder before you join the carriageway so that you will not obstruct a flow of traffic on it. Lovely! Who makes a toucan crossing different? I said who. I really can't read. <sighs> what makes a toucan crossing different from other crossings? Um, I think it's cyclists can use it too, yeah. It's controlled by police officers, only ch children can use it. The slights are different from those of other crossings. Cyclists can use it too. Um, ordinarily, you use dipped headlights at night. When must you use dipped headlights in the daytime? When it's raining, when you're driving in built up area, when you are parallel parking, when visibility is poor. Although you may be able to see the road perfectly well, <coughs> You also need to be seen by other drivers. You should use dipped headlights whenever conditions make visibility more difficult. Whenever conditions... Did I say whenever weather conditions? Whenever conditions make... What conditions? Alright. Um, if you use a hands-free phone while you are driving, you are likely to have better concentration, have normal concentration, it's just like listening to the radio, have your attention, attention diverted, have your view restricted. Let's do, I think attention diverted, have normal concentration, it's just like listening to the radio. I don't know, I feel like that's a setup. That was a setup. Even though using a hands-free phone is safer than using a handheld phone, it's still distracting. In which of these situations should you not overtake? When the road dips, when you are driving in a one-way street, just after you've completed a bend, when there is a speed limit of 40 miles per hour, um, let's say when the road dips. Oh, oh yay! When should you not overtake if there's a dip? You should not. I'm not reading properly. You should not overtake if there's a dip in the road because your visibility could be impaired. Should I do the brightness up a bit? I don't like bright screens. Um, you are driving along a three lane motorway while towing a trailer. You must not tow without having a stabiliser fitted, overtake, use the right hand lane, drive faster than 50 miles per hour. You must not tow without having a stabiliser fitted. I don't remember what we just did when it, that question about towing. Oh, no hints, no hints. Um, isn't it drive faster than 60 miles per hour? Use the right hand lane. Use the right hand lane. <gasps> Yay! You are not allowed to use the right hand lane when you are towing a trailer because you would obstruct the flow of traffic. This is because the national speed limit when you are towing a trailer on a motorway is 60 miles per hour. Um, not all 30, mile per hour, 30 miles per hour roads have the designate, designated maximum speed displayed. How do you know if you are driving along a road that has a speed limit of 30 miles per hour? Um, there are pedestrian islands on the road, there are single or double yellow lines on the road, there are hazard warning lines on the road, there is street lighting. The presence of street lighting for pedestrians suggests that it is a built up area. The speed limit for a built up area is 30 miles per hour. If there has been an incident casualties, 
If there has been an incident, casualties are a priority when the area is safe. You should give them a drink if they are thirsty, make sure that they stay in their vehicles, make sure they get out of their vehicles, give them something to eat if they are hungry. When the area is safe, um, make sure they get out of their vehicles. Alright, fair play. Uh, vehicle registration specific. A vehicle registration certificate for V5C must be kept updated. Whose legal le whose legal responsibility is it? Is this the manufacturer of the vehicle, the company that insures the vehicle, the licensing authority, the registered keeper of the vehicle? On a motorway, where can amber reflective studs be found? Amber, I believe, is on the left. Between all lanes, the acceleration lane and the carriageway, the carriageway and the hard shoulder, between the carriageway and the central, central reservation. I don't actually remember. Is it on the left or the right? I'm just going to go with the middle one. Between the carriageway and the central reservation. So between the left and middle lane. Okay, I don't know the lanes. I'm going to have to check that out. Um, at night, oh wait, you know, you will know if a road has a dedicated cycle lane because of the solid white line. When are you permitted to cross that line? When traffic is particularly heavy, if it's empty, at night, never. It's either if it's empty or never. We're gonna do ip dip do. Ip dip do the cats can flu the dogs got chicken pops out for you, but push dirt, you not much clean. It's the boy in the magazine, my mum is very cute, you e e n n. Um never. Oh yay! You are ne never permitted to cross a solid white line. If you have put too much oil in your engine, it could leak out, the oil pressure could rise too high, it could be do serious damage, all of the above could occur. All of the above. Do not add so much oil that the level rises above the maximum mark. You'll cause excessive oil pressure, could damage the engine seals and, ga and gasket, and lead to oil leaks. Also, moving internal parts could hit the oil surface and do serious or even terminal damage. If you're towing a caravan, are you allowed to carry passengers in it? Yes, if the car caravan has the added precaution of a stabiliser wheel. Yes, but only if, if the towing vehicle has no empty seats. Yes, if they are over the age of 16. No, never. If you're towing a caravan, are you allowed to carry... Oh, if you are towing a caravan, are you allowed to carry passengers in it? You're towing a caravan. Can I say, I'm just going to say no, I'm not sure. Oh, you can't. It is illegal to carry passengers in a caravan whilst it's being towed because it's far too dangerous. You are driving behind a large vehicle. You should keep well back because otherwise the, the driver of the large vehicle will not be able to see you in the vehicle's mirrors. The large vehicle will be able to brake safely. You will be protected by the wind in that position. You will be able to take corners and bends more quickly. You are driving along a main road and approaching a side road when another driver pulls out in front of you, forcing you to brake hard. What should you do? Ignore the incident and stay calm. I think that one. While you are driving along a busy road, you realise that you are lost. What should you do? Um... I think it's this one. It is raining, so you are keeping a safe distance from the vehicle in front. Another vehicle overtakes you and pulls into the gap. What should you do? Um, yeah. 
You are driving along when you suddenly see a motorcyclist lying on hunches in the road. No other vehicles involved. What is the first thing you should do? Isn't it? Check if they're breathing still. Get the motorcyclists off the road. Warn other drivers. Oh. That does that. You wouldn't touch the person. Like I was just a bit too quick to jump there. Um, before you stop your car, you must indicate as soon as you think about pulling over until you find a safe place to make the manoeuvre. Indicate a pull over and pull over immediately. Before you stop your car, you must indicate and pull over immediately. Check your mirrors to see if other road users will be affected by your manoeuvre. Flash your headlights to let other road users know that you're about to do something. Check your mirror to see if other road movement. Check your mirrors. Okay, before you stop your car, you must check your mirrors so that you can make an informed decision about when you can make a maneuver safely. What are traffic calming measures used for? Reducing speed. Is it slowing traffic down or reducing road rage in re reducing road rage in incidents? Slowing traffic. Okay. Um, you are driving along the middle lane of a three-lane motorway. What is the national speed limit for motor cars in this lane? You are driving along the middle lane of a three-lane motorway. What is the national speed limit for cars in this lane? I'm not sure. I'm just going to go with 60. I have a feeling it's 70. But 60. It's 70. Alright. When you're driving, there is a police car behind you. The police officer flashes you and then points to the left. What should you do? Pull over to the left as soon as it is safe to do so. Um, yeah. The fluid in your car's battery needs topping up. What should you do? The fluid in your car's battery needs topping up. What should you do? Battery acid, coolant, engine oil, distilled water. I know there's two things. There's two things you need to fill up your car with. Water and oil. Like, you have to check the oil of your car, and I know you have to check the water sometimes. I feel like it's water. Engine oil. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with water. <gasps> Yay! A car battery should be topped up with distilled water. An ambulance is following you, using flashing lights and a siren. What should you do? Um pull over. It is compulsory for a motor car to have an MOT certificate when it is three years old. To let you know what you should stop, a school crossing patrol will show your red light, point a finger at your vehicle, show us you a stop sign, wave an arm at you. Show you a stop sign. You're waiting at a junction of a minor road onto a busy road and want to turn left. A large vehicle is approaching from the right. You know that you'll be able to turn in time, but you should still wait. What is the reason for this? Large vehicle size may make it seem as if it's going slow, slower than it really is. The large vehicle may be obstructing other vehicles to the left of it. The large vehicle may be obscuring your view, preventing you from seeing if another vehicle is overtaking. The large vehicle may be having problems steering straight. All of the above. <laughs> the 
the large vehicle may be obstructing other vehicles to it, the left of it. It's turning right. No, there are no other vehicles to the left of it. It's approaching from the right. So I'm on a minor road and I'm trying to... On a minor road onto a busy way to a junction out of a minor road onto a busy road. And the busy road is to my left. And this... So he's coming in like this and I'm going out like that. So he's turning, um, and he's on his, I'm on his left, no I'm on his, yeah I'm on his left, and there are no cars on his left, so that doesn't count, the large vehicle may be obscuring your view, preventing you from seeing other vehicles overtaking it, true, but there shouldn't be any vehicles overtaking it. The large vehicle size may make it seem as if it's going slower than it is. The vehicle may be obstructing- yeah. The vehicle may be having problems steering straight. <sighs> Let's go with number one. The vehicle may be obscuring your view, preventing you from seeing if another vehicle is overtaking you. Alright. Um, braking distances change in different weather conditions and icy conditions. Braking distances are 10 times greater than usual. You want to turn left into a side street, but there are pedestrians crossing the road. What should you do? Drive in front of them, wait until they have crossed, drive behind them, sound your horn to make them aware that you want to cross. You are driving when your mobile phone starts to ring, what should you do? Uh, stop the car meeting and answer it. Stop the car in a safe place and answer it. Answer it straight away, have a conversation. Answer it straight away, tell the person that you will call back later. Provided the vehicle is kept off the road, the statutory off-road notification is valid until the vehicle is taxed, sold, scrapped or permanently exported. If the weather is very windy, you need to take extra care when overtaking a cyclist. Being tailgated means that another vehicle is colliding with the back of your vehicle. You are towing a trailer. Another vehicle is driving very close behind you. It is raining heavily. You are following a large vehicle that is creating a lot of spray. You should increase your speed and overtake the large vehicle as quickly as you can. Stay as close to the large vehicle as you can to avoid the spray. Put your headlights on full beam to improve your visibility. Increase the distance between you and the larger vehicle until you can see better. Oh. I don't know, is it is it the top one or the bottom one? It did do the cat's got the flu, the dog's got the horse out, it was you. Not because you're dirty, not because you're clean, not because you're the boy in the magazine, my mom and baby play with you, you. We're gonna go with increase the distance. I thought it was to put your lights on, but that wouldn't make sense, would it? Being able to see properly is important, so you should keep your distance. On what kind of road would be most affected by a side wind? What? In what kind of road would you be most affected by a side wind? I'm not gonna lie, what is a side wind <laughs> like? Guys, I'm so tired. Like, what's a side wind? Um, a country road. What's a country road? A three-lined road. A busy road. An open road. It did do the cat. I'm just gonna say an open road. <gasps> Yay! Strong winds affect open roads the most because there are no obstructions to the wind. Yay! That one I used. I don't know what co I was about to say. Common sense. I don't have any. You're driving on a motorway and are getting tired, so you decide that you need to stop. Where should you do this? Slip road, central reservation, hard shoulder, at a service station. A long, heavy vehicle is trying to overtake you. 
but it, it but it is taking a long time what should you do keep driving at the same speed it will pass you soon slow down so it can overtake you more quickly speed up change direction slow down if you are driving through a tunnel you must take off your sunglasses switch on your windscreen wipers Make sure that your rear fog lights are on. Keep your eyes open for variable road signs. Make sure you, that your air conditioning is working properly. Um, make sure your rear fog lights are on. Switch on your windscreen wipers. I guess keep your eyes open for variable road signs. The rules and regulations and tunnels may vary depending on conditions, so you must look out for road signs. In every test I've taken, um, not every test, but in it, on my phone app, right, they say the first thing you should do is take off your sunglasses. I think one of the questions on this site was like, take off your sunglasses. Anyway, to tow a trailer, you must ensure that it is hitched securely to the towing vehicle. What could you use as extra precaution? an extra tow hitch, a jockey wheel, a liquid gas cylinder, a breakaway cable, I guess an extra tow hitch, what's a breakaway cable? I don't know what a breakaway cable is. You're behind a long vehicle and are approaching a mini roundabout, although the long vehicle indicates left it moves to the right of the road, what should you do? Assume the long vehicle is trying to avoid something in the road, therefore follow it. Stay well back, flash your lights, or sound your horn to let the driver know that you're not happy with the manoeuvre. Overtake the long vehicle. Stay well back. If you carry a heavy load on a roof rack, you will have improved road holding, heavier steering, lighter steering, reduced stability. I'm going to go with heavier steering. Reduced stability. Okay, following too closely behind a large vehicle is not a good idea because you'll get pulled along in the slipstream, you'll have to keep braking, um, you'll have to keep slowing down and speeding up, your engine will overheat, your view will be impeded. View results. We got 80%. Yay! How many did I get wrong this time? One less than last time, guys. I'm kind of gonna cry. I not cry. As you can see, I'm very over it. Um, we're closer to the mark, closer to a hundred percent, but we're not in the green. I've taken three tests so far, four tests, and not one time have I passed. Um, it's quite evident that I don't know what I'm doing. How long did that take me? That took me 32 minutes, so that's interesting, isn't it? Um, yeah, let's go look at my things. <sighs> did I get one line when I didn't get one question wrong? No, not one. Aww. This one, like the whole time I was taking the test, I was thinking, please don't get this one wrong. Don't get this one wrong, please. Don't get it wrong, please. Don't get it wrong, please. Don't get it wrong, don't get it wrong. This one here, if you carry a heavy load on a roof rack, you will have reduced stability. If you carry a heavy load on a roof rack, stability will be reduced, so you will need to drive with caution. Breakaway cable. Before starting your journey, check the caravan or train is correctly hitched up with the breakaway cable or secondary coupling properly connected. And the coupling head fully engaged and locked. A large vehicle coming from the right can obscure view, preventing you from seeing if another vehicle is overtaking. The national speed limit for motor cars on the motorway is 70 miles per hour. You should warn other drivers so that a collision and further injuries can be avoided. The amber reflective studs indicate the central reservation so that drivers will be aware that it is it is the outside lane. Injured persons should not be moved until they have been assessed by medical personnel. Moving an injured person or giving the person food or water can make some injuries worse. 
the driver is always responsible for all associated all things associated with the vehicle regardless of who the reg registered keeper is um, although this could be the same person the national speed limit for motor cars on the motorway is 70 miles per hour the right hand lane of a three lane dual carriageway can be used for turning right or overtaking take care in case of the vehicle so if i got like one or even no i needed three to pass well guys that is me done for the day as you can see um i've slowly got better at guessing i guess i think that's what i've learned from today i've gotten better at guessing i've also learned from today's experience that I'm still not 100% with my traffic signs that I need to um, take a look at um, what topic is it I think that I just did badly on I think not vehicle loading I guess incidents and accidents documents for sure um, road and traffic signs rules of the road motorway rules vehicle handling uh, I think I'm okay with vulnerable road users um, hazard awareness could always be brushed up on um, safety margins and pretty much everything else you know the entire book yeah um guys that is me done for the day. I'm done. Um, that was that was tiresome. I don't I don't know. I hate I don't like making the same mistakes over and over again. But yet here I am making the same mistakes over and over again. Um, it's kind of it's kind of frustrating a bit. Um, it's definitely putting a bad taste in my mouth, making me feel very um useless and what's the word incapable even though i know i'm capable uh, i feel it's kind of disappointed actually like maybe maybe it's my approach maybe it's because i'm not taking it seriously <laughs> maybe that's why i'm not coming out you know when people do things effortlessly it's like oh i'm just effortlessly effortlessly getting it right effortlessly knowing the material so everything's just so like yeah i don't even gotta try well it's quite evident that this is one of those things where i do have to try that me doing the bare minimum isn't gonna get me a pass it's gonna get me a fail so yeah um i'm gonna be trying again obviously it is now seven or just after seven o'clock um what am i gonna do now i think i'm just gonna go on quizlet put in the questions that i got wrong in and then i'm going to what am i gonna do let's be realistic what am i gonna do i guess i can go through some quizlet flashcards that other people have made on road signs and have a look at that um i might do some like that other site i was talking about i might go through the i think it's driving test success or something i might go through that and try some of the quizzes on there um i don't know i might just toggle between that one and then the other one um <laughs> get a hold on like the the documentation part because I obviously don't know anything enough. And I might do some more questions in here. I've said a lot just now. I just said I'm going to go on two different sites. Quizlet and do some questions in here. I might end up doing like five questions in here. But as long as I do something, then I guess I'll be okay. Anyway guys, thank you for tuning in today. This one's been a long, I don't know how long this video is going to turn out. Um, but... Thank you for tuning in, as always. Um, let me know down below if you guys did the questions along with me. Let me know what you guys got or if you've even tried the sites for yourself. 
and yeah i guess i'll be seeing you guys tomorrow where we try for the fourth time to pass at least one test and that's me done for the day like i said thank you for tuning in i love you guys and i'll see you in my next one bye